Hey, welcome to Good Time and Tools. Here's another episode of Fixing Your Shit. Today is going to be a service, well, just the all change on R12, which is the same thing, well, R12X. It's the same thing as the R12, R12X, F12, and F12X. I'm going to show you all step by step on how I do my oil changes. There may be other ways to do it, but this is just show on how I do it. So let me go, go ahead and show you all everything you all need uh, to get this job done, and we're going to go ahead and get to it. All right, y'all. So this is what's going to be needed whenever you're doing the oil change on an R12X, R12, and you know the rest of them. So you're going to need, this is what I run, Mobile One. People, a lot of people run, you know, they have their preferences on Amazon. It's just what you prefer. Uh, as long as you put a good quality oil in this thing, that's all that matters, and you keep it up with the services. Usually you want to change your oil once every season, depending on how much times you ride and the environments you're in. So you can either run this one, 5W30, or I personally run 10W30. It don't really hurt uh, which one you run. So I run Lucas Synthetic All uh, Additive with the mobile one as well. I usually put this first and then put this on top. And it's usually about four and a half, five quarts the ski would take, depending on how much you can extract out. So the all filter would be a KN204. Make sure you get this filter. It's nice to have this filter because it does have the uh, socket head on top. The socket head is actually an 11 16 makes life so much easier you want to get you a long extension to where you can get over the body and then with a ratchet now one main thing you're going to need is an extraction pump so you get this you're going to need compressed air for this type if you have compressed air good this this one works a lot if not they have the manual version that you pump uh, besides this to help avoid mess you're going to have some also pads the spots you're working you want to kind of put this underneath in case any oil falls out it's gonna this is gonna catch it instead of getting inside your ski and you're gonna need rags to clean up other than that that should be everything you need to start this job so another thing that i do if you do have an aftermarket exhaust start it for a briefly uh not long and then put water to it don't open the water all the way trickle the water just enough to get some flow throughout the motor and you don't want to do too too long what i'm going to do is i'm going to start it up and let it run a little while just like this the little while I do run it is going to get the oil up to a little bit of temperature. It's going to help extract it better. Second, I'm not running it enough to get it too hot to where it can cause any issues. So I'm going to go ahead and start it for a little bit. And uh, later on, get my oil to all temperature to a little bit of temperature. All right, so after you let it sit and warm up a little bit, uh, it doesn't take too long. You don't want to put too much heat into it uh, to take a, a chance of damaging the motor. Um, so this is what you're going to do. You're going to take the jack in the front of your trailer put that all the way down then you got your port at the bottom of your motor you want to take your port off I'm gonna show you so you see that way down there you're gonna undo that cap that's not gonna be a dipstick and now I got it just gonna be a cap you're gonna take that open it up take the extractor let me take my little cap off you can take of course the cap off I'm gonna get my thin one I'm gonna take this one and we'll be shoving that inside that hole onto the extractor and I'm going to let the extractor start sucking the oil out. So now I got the extractor set up with the little small holes. I'm going to take it and feed it into there. And then open my valves and let it put on. You're gonna sit, it's gonna be a little while before this is done, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off to the next step. So, after your next year's birthday, when it's finally done dry, uh, sucking up oil, so the jet ski's still leaning forward. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jack up the front of it to get it coming back my way uh, to get the oil to settle like this way, and we can keep on sucking until we can't suck no more. Now that it's jacked up, I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, air back to the, the extractor and let it suck out as much as I can. And then once I've, uh, you start seeing that there's no more oil flow coming through this and it started to be clean, kind of work it. Not fast. Don't do it fast. But work the holes itself back and forth until you uh, it starts to grab more oil. Just keep doing that just to make sure you're not the hose isn't passing up the puddle of oil. Uh, it just kind of helps get, get as much as you can out of it. All right. I still got the, the pump uh, with compressed air going through. That's why it's kind of loud. But right now, 
so I'm still getting suction going through it but it's it's kind of clear there's nothing really flowing through it so at this point you want to take it and move it back and forth see just now I picked up some I'm gonna take that I'm gonna leave it right there until it stops sucking and then I'm gonna just keep working it back and forth just to make sure that I get everything out of it all right so we finished pulling everything out from the bottom of the motor which is that little drain hole at the bottom right here so now what you want to do it was jacked up put it all the way back down come to this oil reservoir right here pull your cap off which is right here pull that and then take the same tube that you suck the oil in the back and stuff it in there it's going to go if you don't put it in the right way there's one little passage that goes all the way at the bottom you got to make sure you find it see look right there it's going to go in pretty deeply so just make sure you put it all the way in there and then uh, try to grab all y'all all right so of course you want to make sure this is all the way in there i did get everything out of it so you see how it's clean right here you couldn't really see what i had in the back but whenever you start sucking through this is going to be you're going to get some residual oil come through but when it starts doing that it's just about wrapped up so i did lean it all the way forward got it sucked as much as i can so what i'm gonna do is go ahead pull it off clean you know save everything get that out the way to where i ain't gonna worry about that later now what we're gonna do is start taking off that oil filter the good thing is though it does have that uh bolt head on top of it so let me go ahead and start saving this and we're gonna get back to the oil filter so take your ratchet undo your your oil filter i have my suction thing ready i'm gonna just break it loose now let me start putting my air back to it i'm gonna put my air back to it as i pull the filter off i'm gonna do a little bit at a little bit because once you start breaking the oil filter off loose all your wheels start coming off of it there is a little hole a little uh, drain spot on that uh, housing just so it don't get in the hole what i'm going to do is i'm gonna keep sucking it sucking it and sucking it uh to where i don't get my hole all nasty and also for backup i'll be placing it also pad
right, now we time to add all. Now we time to add all. I'll butcher that. So what I'm doing is I'm starting off. Don't mind the fakeness. But I'm starting off with this, Pure Synthetic All by Lupus. I love running their additives. I run the uh, the regular synthetic blend and my Tahoe. Um, everything else. I usually put this in everything that I run. This and Mobile One. I love that combination. Uh, it just helps against dry starts, um, friction. It just reduces a lot of friction. It actually, you wouldn't believe, but it does help uh, cooler temperatures. Because you don't have that friction. You don't have that, that intense heat in your motor. Um, I just I really like it for the dry not not dry starting so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in there first and then after we should use about four quarts three and a half four quarts of the other uh, oil and uh, we're gonna start it up a little bit let it run let it set and then we're gonna try it again All right, now it's time to put the oil. Don't mind the is it was behind this jackass's truck, so don't mind the uh, the label. The oil still good. I'm gonna start off by putting three quarts, and I'm gonna check to see how high it is from the level. So we're gonna go ahead, make sure it's just wiped off, clean off. I don't wanna put no trash in this thing. Put it in, sit, let it sit, pull it out and just check, see where, where we're at. Okay, we're a little above, so I'm not gonna add no more. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, actually just rotate it. I'm not gonna start it just yet. I'm gonna try to get some oil flow. So what I'm gonna do is these connections right here, I usually unplug them where the, ro the motor just rotates i don't get no spark no nothing so the motor don't start i don't want to draw uh start it dry so i'm gonna just put the key back in it let it rotate for a little while try to get some of that all circulating through the motor and then after a little while of doing it, i'm gonna do that probably one to maybe three times depending and then i'm gonna go ahead and just uh check it again i just want some to get some flow and then uh we might start it let it run for a little bit and then shut it down and see what all is doing All right, so I rotated the motor. I did it three times, probably 30 seconds each. And I was at the top. I was a decent bit on this dipstick. I'm gonna pull it off, wipe it, set it back in there. And I wanna just check, make sure I had all flow. So as you can see, I was right here. I started off right here. So I did get some oil circulation through the motor. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it back off, put that back in there and just let it run for a couple minutes. All right, so I did let it run. I timed it. I did a two minute startup on it. Now I'm just letting it settle for a little while and then I'm gonna pull it back out and check it again. All right, so I did let it run and I let it sit for a little while. I was getting nothing on a dipstick. So that means I have to add. And once I add to the level I need, that should be good. All right, so that's how you change the oil. Um, we're actually gonna be making a video real soon on this exact jet ski on changing the exhaust on it. So my buddy Joey actually has ex aftermarket exhaust that we'll be putting in the place of the ones they have on the jet ski that comes with them. Um, so look forward to that video as well. And I have another, my personal jet ski that I'm going to be doing a lot of work to. And I'm going to take as much videos as I can to where you can see how to do things on uh, the jet ski as well. But other than that, if you have any questions or concerns, uh, put it down in the comments. I have my Instagram page on there. If you can, you can message me directly and I'll do what I can to uh, reach back to you. But other than that, uh, let me know what you need and that's how you change the oil on the Honda Aquatrax. Sun is coming up, are you ready to go? We can take a ride, we can take it slow. Your will is my law, I'ma let you be the boss cause I'll go where you go. I'll take you to a place, we can see it all. Hey, Step off the edge, I can break your fall. Your will is my law, I'ma let you be the boss.